This is Mac OS Ken. A lowered price target on Apple shares. Apple's union tango continues. And Speed Racer may be racing on the Apple TV+. Plus. It is Thursday, the 26th of May, 2022. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Notion. One workspace for your whole team. Learn more and get started for free at Notion.com slash macOSCan. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at Patreon.com slash macOSCan. Another Apple price target has dipped a bit. Seeking Alpha says Loop Capital Analyst Ananda Barua has lowered his firm's 12-month price target on Apple shares, thanks in part to concerns around iPhone for the current quarter. Note's kind of weird. While he thinks others of his ilk are overshooting iPhone expectations for the June quarter by 4 million to 6 million units, his team thinks the street remains low on iPhone revenue for the September and December quarters, given average selling prices. While the analyst is still positive on Apple shares, his former price target of 210 bucks looks a bit steep to climb in the next year. He's dropped his price target on shares of the Cupertino company to $180, maintaining a buy rating. Apple is leaning pretty hard against unionization moves at its retail stores. Bloomberg ran a piece Wednesday highlighting a video message from Apple's senior VP of Retail Plus People, Deirdre O'Brien, to retail employees. Leaked audio of that video had O'Brien telling staff, It is your right to join a union, and it is equally your right to not join a union. And if you're faced with that decision, I want to encourage you to consult a wide range of people and sources to make sure you understand what it could mean to work at Apple under a collective bargaining agreement. O'Brien's message leaned heavily on a theme of openness and togetherness between Apple and retail staff. The messaging also expressed concern over what a union might do to that relationship. Quoting the video again, I worry about what it would mean to put another organization in the middle of our relationship, an organization that doesn't have a deep understanding of Apple or our business, and most importantly, one that I do not believe shares our commitment to you. O'Brien also expressed concern that the addition of a union would hinder Apple's ability to react quickly to big issues like the pandemic, as well as issues raised by workers themselves. How all of that plays with retail staff remains to be seen. A number of store staffs are eyeing union moves, with a couple set to vote on the issue next month. Speaking of stores eyeing the issue, a piece from Bloomberg Law says workers at Apple Oxmoor in Louisville, Kentucky, are considering unionization. According to the report, Jay Hedgespeth, the 20-year-old retail specialist behind the effort, said workers are motivated to unionize by pandemic burnout, low pay relative to Apple's profits, and an increasingly metrics-driven culture that has left employees feeling disconnected from their work. While they're said to have crossed the 30% threshold needed to hold a vote on a union, the organizer says they're looking for a solid majority before seeking an affiliation and calling for a vote. News of three small updates from Apple on Wednesday, though one has big implications. Starting with that one, iMore says Apple has released iOS 15.5.1. According to the piece, the .1 update will bring iPhone-to-iPhone contactless payments for everyone. I will say that makes a Twitter post from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman make more sense. That had Apple's tap-to-pay lighting up across Apple stores beginning yesterday, Wednesday, the 25th of May, Announced earlier this year, Apple's stated goal with Tap to Pay is to empower millions of merchants across the U.S., from small businesses to large retailers, to use their iPhone to seamlessly and securely accept Apple Pay, contactless credit and debit cards, and other digital wallets through a simple tap to their iPhone, no additional hardware or payment terminal needed. 
making little to no waves are the updates for Apple's media devices. A piece from Apple Insider says the Cupertino company released tvOS 15.5.1 and the 15.5.1 version of the HomePod software. The piece says the HomePod update addresses an issue where music could stop playing after a short time. No word in any report I saw on a stated reason for the update for tvOS. More news in a moment, but first a word from Notion, one workspace for your whole team. With hybrid work probably here to stay, the strongest teams are the ones who can keep it together without having to be together. Let Notion be the one hub where your whole team can share work and processes, manage projects, and collaborate with clarity. For companies of all sizes, Notion provides one central and customizable workspace that can be tailored to fit any team and bring those teams together to get more done and move faster. Companies of all sizes, Figma, Axios, Headspace, Duolingo, and so many more companies that you know and use know and use Notion. And those companies make it easier for your company. Notion has a worldwide network of millions of users creating templates, tutorials, and new inspiration. You're not only using the tools that they use, you can use them the way they use them too. Learn more and get started for free at notion.com slash macOSCan. That's notion.com slash macOSCan to help you take the first step toward an organized, happier team today. N-O-T-I-O-N. That's notion.com slash macOSCan. What do Maryland and Arizona have in common? As of yesterday, they are the two states in the union that'll let people put their driver's licenses and state IDs in Apple Wallet. Mac Rumor says the old line state let residents know Wednesday that they can add the IDs to their iPhone and Apple Watch and use them almost nowhere. For now, the piece says IDs in the Wallet app can only be presented at select TSA checkpoints at select U.S. airports, with Apple advising travelers to check TSA checkpoint signage to confirm availability. The state also stresses that law enforcement will not accept licenses or IDs in the Apple Wallet. Residents must continue to carry their physical driver's license or ID card with them, according to the report. You can look at news of arrivals and departures to Apple's Project Titan as indicative of trouble for the fabled Apple car. Personally, I'm thinking it is just a really hot job field right now. Witness the fact that Apple keeps hiring people from other companies and, yes, the fact that other companies keep hiring people from Apple. A piece from Bloomberg has word of the latest departure from Project Titan. According to the report, Christopher C.J. Moore, a manager on Apple's car project and a former director of autopilot at Tesla, has left Apple for Orlando-based Luminar Technologies. Luminar makes laser sensors used in semi-autonomous driving. Moore will lead Luminar's global software development after a little over six months at Apple. I'm not saying everything is awesome inside Apple's car project. There is no way for me to know. But self-driving cars seem like a really hot job market right now. Augmented reality walking directions for Apple Maps have landed in another city. iDownload blog says the feature has now been turned on for Tokyo. This seems like one of those features that shows how amazing augmented reality could be. To use this mode, iDownload blog says, you must raise your iPhone to allow the maps to scan buildings in your vicinity. Those scans, combined with GPS location information and data from the iPhone's onboard sensors, enable Apple Maps to create a highly accurate position and deliver detailed AR walking directions overlaid on the real world. It's that raising your iPhone part that kills it for me. 
and a pair of AR glasses, this would be amazing. Actually, it's already pretty amazing, but the having to hold up your iPhone in front of you while you walk still kills it for me. Good for the second generation iPhone SE or iPhone XR, XS, or later. You need to be running iOS 15 to access AR walking directions. You also need to be in London, LA, Montreal, New York, Philadelphia, San Diego, the San Francisco Bay Area, Singapore, Tokyo as of yesterday, Toronto, Vancouver, or Washington, D.C. There's a special set of Beats Studio Buds out this week. 9 to 5 Mac has word of a new pair put out in partnership with the Amsterdam clothing brand Daily Paper. The buds themselves are white, though they come in a graffiti-looking case and Daily Paper sign in red. Otherwise, they're Beats Studio Buds. Those include active noise cancelling and transparency mode. They do not include H1 or W1 chips, so some of the neater tricks in PowerBeats Pro, AirPods, or AirPods Pro are out of the mix. Still, that daily paper groove. The special set goes on sale today, Thursday the 26th of May at daily paper stores, or on that company's website. They will run buyers just shy of 150 bucks. And finally today, Speed Racer may be racing on to Apple TV+. Plus. The Hollywood Reporter says there is serious talk of a live-action series of the animated property heading to the Cupertino streamer with J.J. Abrams' fingerprints all over it. According to the piece, sources say Hiram Martinez, who worked on the TV shows Snowpiercer and Get Shorty, is set to co-write the project and serve as showrunner, as his exciting take on the source material is said to have impressed Apple, Bad Robot, and Warners. Ron Fitzgerald, who works with Abrams on HBO's Westworld, is the other co-writer and showrunner. Abrams and his Bad Robot banner are set to executive produce. His exciting take? You know what's exciting about Speed Racer? It's Speed Racer. There are so many reasons I will not be getting excited about this anytime soon. First, has anybody watched J.J. Abrams' stuff lately? He kind of has this way of soiling the intellectual property on which some of us grew up. Second, we don't know when it's going to happen. And third, we don't know if it's going to happen. The day I see a trailer, then I will get excited. Maybe. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Notion, one workspace for your whole team. Learn more and get started for free at notion.com slash macOSCan. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash Mac OS Can. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time... That is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.